Hello and welcome to today's discussion uh, with Randy Zalinski of the American uh, Jewish Committee, also known as AJC, as we celebrate Randy as the 2021 Global Leader of Influence here at the Council. I'm Sandy Yobayu, Chief Development Officer here at the World Affairs Council of Greater Houston. I hope that all of you, your families and loved ones are doing well and staying healthy. Randy, congratulations and welcome. Thank you, appreciate it. Hope yeah. you're safe, hope you're well. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let me share a little bit more about the actual event, uh, if I may. Uh, that's going to be taking place uh, in a few months' time. Uh, the World Affairs Council of Greater Houston is dedicated to honoring individuals who, in the spirit of Jesse H. and Mary Gibbs Jones, have contributed to the international spirit of our city. And in celebration of these individuals, the World Affairs Council hosts the Daniel Jesse H. Jones Awards Luncheon to highlight their achievements. This year, the World Affairs Council has selected, honored, and will recognize BP's Starley Sykes and Alistair Vickers as our 2021 International Citizens of the Year. During this momentous event, we will also highlight our global leaders of influence, and that is Randy. These are also individuals that have been very instrumental uh, for the city of Houston and have been key leaders in various industries that they represent. Randy, a little bit more about you, if I may. You have been indeed a leader and if you're known as such, if I may share with our uh, viewers some of the highlights. And again, I'm sure this is just a tiny bit of you, what you have accomplished. You have been engaged in diplomatic and political advocacy on international issues for four decades and in many parts of our country, working in the nonprofit and geo community, specifically with the American Jewish community for the last 15 years already. You have met and built relationships with consuls, elected officials on local, state, national levels, um, ambassadors, heads of state, where you discussed and advocated for local and geopolitical issues. Some of those relationships and actions have resulted in backdoor diplomacy between countries, including establishing formal diplomatic relations, as well as building bridges between opposing sides locally and nationally in common issues. Your global endeavors include having served on the Mayor's International oh. Affairs Commission, uh, working with the other with various other international organizations, coordinating with Mickey Leland Kibbutzim Foundation, moderating as well as serving on panels, uh, discussing various foreign policy and leading influentials on seminars to Russia, Cuba, and the Middle East. You certainly are known here in the community as the go-to person to get things done. So what an accomplishment, Randy. In preparation for this uh, dialogue, and I'm sure you know we have a very engaged high school community and university students that we work with. Uh, we work with them through Student World Affairs Councils, known as SWACs. And I had reached out to those students actually uh, in preparation for especially the dialogue with you and asked them to submit questions that they would like to hear from you and get to know your career path a little bit and you uh, personally. So. From here on, if I may, Andy, go ahead and uh, ask the questions submitted by the students. Elizabeth asked, from your professional career path, is there something that you might want to highlight, perhaps an accomplishment? All the questions that were presented are absolutely great, and some are extremely personal, which is also helping get insights. Accomplishments you already referred to, Yes, I think the relationship building and what comes from those relationships, which you talked about, back channel diplomacy. There was at a point here in Houston that globally two countries weren't showing up or talking to each other, but it was passed on based on the relationships and formulating relationships between countries off seminars going somewhere in the world, taking an ambassador that officially wasn't there but building 
the very foundation for those relationships to be established. The one other piece, you referred to the Mickey Leland Kibbutzim Foundation. <clears throat> I've been fortunate for over 20 years to be engaged with that foundation. It is a life altering experience for those high school teams to learn about the international arena, learn about a different culture. That is really something that makes one feel positive about the future for the coming generation. Wonderful. And I know you are so humbled. Uh, if we are, I asked you to, the people that you know or people that you met, uh, I think will be here for a long time. And uh, every, any individuals that you would like to highlight? I know, again, you're very humbled and reserved and things that you do are mm -hmm. done because of the soft diplomacy, not to really, uh, you know, disclose anything. But uh, if somebody comes to mind, you're certainly welcome to do that. Okay, well, appreciate it. But usually yeah. it's because those relationships exactly. and it's not discussed publicly, those things get to happen. Exactly, so. exactly. <laughs> Completely understood. Um, and Miguel wanted to know actually, how did you arrive where you are today? Uh, again, I did some highlights, but is there, how did, how did Randy arrive here and how are you here today in Houston and what took you here? Well, as the saying goes, everybody got to Texas as soon as they could if they weren't born here. But reality for him learned early in my professional life, you do, in the Jewish community especially, you do have to move around if you wish to continue ascending the stairs, if you will, or taking on responsibility in the arenas you're interested in. So one's willingness to move, and that's not always easy. And in today's world, it's even harder. But earlier in my life, it was willingness to move to other cities. And as long as they had a major league baseball team, I was happy to consider moving there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know, how long have you been here in Houston? I arrived in 91 and was gone for four years in North Carolina and been back for almost 16 years. Wow. And may I ask, are you, uh, where, where do you come from? Which part of the United States? Oh, grew up in Kansas City, grew up in the Midwest. Wonderful. I did not know that. Even though I've known you for many years, I yeah, guess. You've known everything, but you don't know everything. Okay. That's absolutely true. Uh, thank you for that. Um, looking back, again, you have so many accomplishments, uh, and again, you're such a humbled uh, individual. Um, any guidance, suggestions, perhaps, that you look at yourself in your Kansas years uh, that you might tell young Randy uh, any guidance early on that, uh, that you would let him know, uh, career, education, or perhaps even personal Sure, the, the personal tidbit or the real guidance that when I look back, yeah, those of you that know history or lived through it, the Watergate years, I was in college, I wrote every member of Congress and every US Senator about Watergate and potentially the need to impeach the President of the United States. And those were 535 letters that were sent. Remember, this was back in the 70s, first class mail wasn't as expensive. I think I heard from almost 25 to 30% of those members of Congress and US senators. And one senator said, whenever you're in Washington, come to my office, be happy to look for options. Well, I was spending a semester in Washington, went to the senator's office, and they said, the only position we have available is working on the Senate elevators. I didn't know what I know today, that's the key job to get to meet almost every US Senator would have been to be working part-time on the Senate elevators, taking those senators up and down offices to the Senate floor. Didn't end up doing that, but looking back, as the question asked, would have been taking that job, working on the US Senate ele elevators. And who knows what would have happened from there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, again, you, you are in the NGO world, uh, very active, of course, community member of the Jewish Committee, um, diplomacy, uh, the foreign dignitaries and such. Um, one of the following questions that Fatima is actually is wondering about, what advice do you have for aspiring students who are considering a similar career? Think hard about it before embarking. It takes time. It is not a first meeting to build a relationship. 
and it takes lots of listening. It's not about just getting in there and advocating, this is what we want from you. It's really building that relationship and listening to whether it's a diplomat, elected official, or other leaders, as opposed to just, this is what we want. Very true, thank you. Um, and we know that work-life balance is uh, very important for uh, everybody. Uh, question is, is there something that you enjoy doing to step away from work? Perhaps there's a hobby or two that uh, you enjoy doing? Well, I think it's twofold on the work-life balance. One, as we all gain experience and age, no one's going to care how many hours we put in a week or how many meetings we went to. The most important thing I've learned, family is the priority. That's who's going to remember what you did and how you were engaged. Once again, no one's going to worry how many hours or did you go to that meeting. They're not going to remember it, but your family will know when you were or were not around. That is very true. Any hobbies? Golfer, reader, biker. Uh, it's, it's all baseball, whether it's participating, yeah. watching. It's baseball's the escape. And I think I've been quoted years ago in the Chronicle baseball's like a second religion to me. So <laughs> that's a big <laughs> hobby. That's a big hobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, Houston is uh, such a global city, and we know it uh, from the, you know, the consulate representatives. Of course, so many uh, nations are here from diverse industries, and being a diverse city, uh, itself. And we know that we are not living in isolation. We are very connected uh, to the pulse of the world. And as we say here at the Council, what happens globally certainly affects us locally and vice versa. Where do you see Houston in 10 years or 15? Well, we'll do the positive and potentially the negative. Houston is an international city will continue to do so and be so, yet at the same time as the Kinder Institute and Steven Kleinberg note, Houston is two cities. It's socio and economically segregated. It's educationally segregated. And we're learning that it's also when it comes to healthcare, segregated once again. If we don't find a way as Houstonians to bring the community together, within the next generation in the next 10 years, the city is going to face a real class structural problems between the haves and the have nots, plus the fiscal issues confronting the city. And how Houston handles what we're doing today is how America may or may not handle as America becomes majority minority. Very true. And I think that's why the global platform conversation uh, conversations that you hold, the conversations that we hold, uh, I think are extremely important and timely. And we are very proud also to be, as I mentioned earlier, to be part of the global education and giving the opportunity for very diverse uh, student population uh, in greater Houston area. Um, one of the students kind of on a switch, very much so switching gears of, uh, um, wanted to know uh, on a personal level, is there, again, move back to the hobby and the other things of, uh, is there a book that you are currently reading or something that you can't wait to get to? Uh, we know on this year, there's a lot of TV series coming and going. Uh, some do binge watching, some not so much. Is there something that you are in tune to that uh, perhaps does not align with work, uh, series that are coming out or new episode or movie, anything that I don't know about you. you this one you do not know about me and this is going to be interesting because I thought about that question and it was intriguing and I debated, do you go public with this? Went, what the <laughs> heck? Besides the Grissom books, um, as a single parent with two young kids, Disney was on. And there's a show that's still on, it's called Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> and that show, really, I found other adults also watch it because it's really a values-based cartoon. My kids now could care less. 
But if Phineas and Ferb are on, I'm finding, gee, there was an episode I didn't see while they were growing up. So it is very interesting, the values orientation that cartoons have. So that's my unique answer. That's certainly very unique, but I would say that uh, so much of, uh, this is completely jumping subject, right? But so much of the uh, cartoons and as we call them, kids movies are, are actually a lot of fun to watch for parents. I think there's different level uh, of references in there that is, I have to say, just as enjoyable as it is you know, for a kid. So I'm, I'm there with you. Yeah, many of them are values driven and you don't even notice it. Absolutely. Especially as a child, but later you're going, wait a second. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Randy, is there anything else that uh, perhaps I, I didn't touch upon or uh, some thoughts that you would like to leave our students? Or again, just because of your such a intense uh, engagement in the city and all the things that you do uh, engage with, I want to make sure that I give you a chance to uh, highlight something if I might have not asked or the students have not. No, I think you've covered it. And for the students, you're engaged, you're interested. That is not typical of today's generation. Don't let others talk you out of it and chase your dream. Wonderful. So thank you again, Randy, uh, for your time. Uh, we are so happy uh, that you are Council's Global Leader of Influence for 2021. Congratulations. Uh, we're again proud of partnership with you personally on things that you do for the Council. Uh, the American Jewish Committee that you represent. Uh, again, congratulations one more time. And for anybody for more details on this event, certainly it's all on our website at wachouston.org. Randy, any closing remarks from you? Yeah, just thank you very much. And thank you for everything you also do, whether it's here in Houston or leading those global trips to uh, acquaint people with the global endeavors of the world. Wonderful. With that, Randy, I'm going to say thank you, and we look forward to seeing you on October 14th. Congratulations one more time, and with much appreciation. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.